Hey guys, today we are going to talk about 8 cards that have gone up in price. Mainly in standard, actually I believe all 8 of these cards are in standard. We will start with Tattered Mummy, which is a common. Now at this point in time, you might be searching for this common in your Amarket fat packs, booster packs, as well as booster boxes, but you won't find any. Why is that? It's an introduction it's only available in the introduction decks. So it's a common, but the only way you can get it is if you buy Liliana's introduction deck. The Planeswalker deck. So we have seen this before with the Chandra deck, the Flame Slash. And the price was artificially spiked. Now, this might be an interesting combo piece. I... As of this moment, I just believe the price has artificially spiked. It used to be 15 cents, now it is $2.89. And opening any amount of Amaket booster packs is not going to increase the supply. So how many people are actually going to want to buy the Planeswalker introduction deck just to get this card? I imagine not too many competitive players, but the card is good. I mean, it's one in a black. It's a 1-2. Whenever it dies, each opponent loses 2 life. So if you have a recursion ability with it, then it is very good. You do not need to wait for it to attack, and you can sacrifice it multiple times, getting multiple triggers each time it comes back into... Oh, each time it dies, actually. So we have seen this before, and the problem with a card like this is no one's going to... A store is not going to pay you for it. The buy list is really not going to go up unless it's seeing a ton of competitive play. And at that point, the store will just open the Planeswalker introduction pack, which they get at distribution level for extremely cheap. These pre-cons are very good for if the pre-con has valuable cards, the store will open them. So next, I will talk about Aetherwark Marvel. It has been a long time since we talked about this card, ever since the Emma Cole she was banned this card has been to decide but i feel like it's good it was at an all-time low just recently not even a few weeks ago it was 399 it has since risen almost 90 cents it can get there i have a gut feeling that this is a card that should you know should the next set be okay with it then it might still go up. It's very unique in what it does. And when it does have a deck, it is the win all card of that deck, meaning it is the essential card of to that deck. So it's not like a side card that you can easily replace. It is the engine that the deck runs on. We know the deck can be very good if we have a ultimate threat. Maybe Nico Bolas becomes that. Maybe this card plays out Nico Bolas. I don't imagine Nicol Bolas being weaker than... Yeah, I, I can't imagine Nicol Bolas being weaker than Emiko. I mean, maybe the same power level. And Emiko was so broken with this card, it was banned. So there you go. Next, we will take a look at this Avow. It's been some time since we looked at this card. It has just tanked and tanked and tanked. And then it is, you know, it's going up in price right now. Uh, partially based on control decks. We're going to take a look at another control deck. But the control decks have been doing pretty well. Uh, the meta game has shifted to control. And Disavow is strictly a better cancel. But it is also more expensive. So counter target spell, activate ability, or triggered ability. It's a counter spell with some upside. Definitely something that you should look out for. I can see this card being quite expensive later on, should after Pro Tour Amaket be more control based. Amaket really doesn't have that many strong cards, and in my opinion, it's kind of slow. People are still going to play Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, and now they have another Gideon to play with. So, if that's your control build, and all you have to do is protect your Gideons, then this card is very, very good. You do have uh, a lot of good cards, a lot of good counter spells out there. You have a critical mass of them, I believe. So I will get to probably the most exciting card for me in that deck. I have seen a blue-white control deck with the Gideons, 
and that seems to be the build that people are bringing to FNM. I actually am still waiting for my four Gideon of Trials. I didn't, I opened a box, but beyond a box, I really don't want to open this product because it's not that great. So, Anointed Procession, and this is the doubling effect. Uh, all doubling effects will eventually be played. The question is, when is the lowest price point? I feel like it has to be after rotation. But it is free in a white. Uh, if in effect will create one more tokens under your control, it creates that many tokens or it creates twice that many tokens. So clearly not a standard card you want to be playing. I mean, if you, okay, at turn four, you play this, it has really no effect in the board and your opponent, opponent plays Gideon. You're going to lose. You will lose that Gideon. I mean, maybe you play your Gideon and then you can double the tokens, but your opponent also has the ability to smash in with Gideon. However, it is also very good with Gideon. In more of a casual FNM deck, I cannot see this being competitive just because when it hits the play, it doesn't affect tempo at all. It just kind of presents itself as a target where they can disenchant it. Anyway, I like the card in EDH. I think it's going to be very, very good eventually uh, when there's less of this printed. Uh, I will talk about print volume. I have noticed an interesting trend in what my local game stores are doing. They're not ordering as much stuff. Uh, they over ordered every single set previous to Amaket, but they kept their Amaket. I don't know if distribution is less or what's going on there, but it's interesting to talk about. Gear Hulk. Uh, Gear Hulk was very, very cheap it, and it pretty much doubled in price. Why did it double in price? Um, LSV was playing a deck, and the deck involved Gear Hulk, and Gear Hulk is the flashy mythic when you play it, it does something amazing. And that's why it has gone up in price. Now we've seen this a lot of times where a card goes up in price because somebody uh, famous is playing it. Uh, it's not a guarantee to happen all the time. The most famous fail would be Brian Kibler and his Daybreak Rangers. He bought like 200 or 400, who actually knows how many he got? But he has a very famous picture where he shows like 200 or 300 of them. And he was promoting them obviously for people to buy and speculate on. But uh, it didn't work out well. So Torrential Gear Hulk is a card that has been seen. I mean it's only seen play in LSV's control deck. And the card has just spiked because of it. I mean it's very typical when we see a famous streamer or a famous magic player play a deck that is fun, entertaining, and it gets people to start buying it. I do feel like there is a real demand because people are trying to make that deck. Tarantula Gear Hulk, $24, one of the only few cards that price point in standard. Now, Pull From Tomorrow, I actually misread this card. It's much better than I initially believed. First of all, it is a draw spell at instant speed. That cannot be underestimated. It's exactly what a control deck wants. It wants to draw at instant speed. Drawing at sorcery speed is the worst because you tap out and there's not much you can do. Drawing at instant speed allows you to see, oh, okay, my opponent didn't play anything. I'm going to play this and get some card advantage. And it is card advantage. So you draw X cards and then you discard one card. To be temple advantage, you need to pay free and double blue because you're losing this card as well. So that means you draw three cards and you discard a card and then you discard this card so you actually gain one card. You do get card selection and you are filling up your grave somewhat, but it really gets good when you can pay four, five, or you know, you're paying four and, sorry, four in double blue, so six total. Then you're drawing four and you're discarding card and you gain two, but you're drawing four. So very good card. It's only it's only being played right now because it's instant speed. Any instant speed card draw, unless it's horrible, will be played and at a high level because that's what Magic players want. They want to play control. Control gives players consistency, and this is one of the cards that will do that. Next, we have another zombie, just like other zombies. When we did the first video, when we did video a few days ago, and we noticed all the zombies were going up in price in standard. This did not actually go up in price. 
uh, until it looks like May 2nd it started trending up. But as the one drop zombie, yes, this is the one drop you want. It is relatively good. Zombies have always had a excellent one drop when they were playable in standard. I, in, in regular Innistrad, they were not like tier one, but they could catch you off surprise if you didn't have graveyard hate. So they were like tier two. And they specifically made this set very weak with graveyard hate. And that's very smart because otherwise these cards would never see play if we had like a rest in peace. Which is not something they did <laughs> in the enchantment set. Uh, I think they printed like return to nature and no one even played that card because enchantments are so bad. This is truly a graveyard theme with, uh, with a lot of really good graveyard effects and they did not print the hate so therefore we will have decks that can take advantage of the graveyard and not worry about that one card that destroys the entire deck. Smart move. I kind of wonder why they didn't do that sooner. Like they're printing a lot of artifact hate because we don't, they don't want you to play artifacts. So in after this set, uh, Hour of Devastation, I'm sure they're going to print get graveyard hate and promote whatever the new set is. And lastly, never return. This card is as good as you can get. Um, is it amazing? No. But as removal goes, there's a lot of Planeswalkers. There's one in particular named Gideon. It is sorcery speed. That's what you have to deal with. Uh, you have to do it. It's not Hero's Downfall good for the control decks, but there's very few ways to deal with Planeswalkers right now. Like, Planeswalkers that can protect themselves. Nyssa produces that plant token. Gideon produces a 2-2. Uh, Gideon of Trials produces, you know, cannot lose Elmlum. These Planeswalkers are getting really good at protecting themselves. Plus, you have the Oaths, right, which can give bonuses. So never is a good way to deal with it. I do like Return. Return is, you know, some... It's also a Planeswalker dealer when against a control deck. The Gideon control deck, the Gideon blue control deck I've seen around is very good. And this card is super good against it. Meaning you can kill their Gideon and then you can present a 2-2 zombie that can, you know, threaten their other Gideons. They're probably smaller Gideon at that time. So I like the card. Anyway, these are the top eight cards that have recently spiked in price and standard. Uh, leave me a comment below if you think I missed any. Bye, guys.